All right, everyone. So welcome to the first ever um, online webinar by IEC with Murtaza Hussain, where Murtaza is going to talk about the dream that changed his life. Um, so I hope that all of you are excited. This is Danish Khan and I work with IEC as a student acquisition manager, which basically means that if you apply to IEC, then the entire admission process is all in place. I will be in touch with you till the time you are enrolled in your course. And I would like to thank everyone who has joined in and everyone who is going to watch this recording afterwards as well. Um, I am super excited and I'm sure that all of us are going to learn a lot from this session. So session ka format kuch oh, UNK, oh. I will um, request Bilal right after me to share a few uh, few words about IEC. So is there, if there is anyone who don't know about IEC, to aap ko IEC ka ek introduction mil jai, brief sa. And then after that, we will have Murtaza's session and Murtaza will talk about um, his dream. And um, towards the end, we will have our question answer session. Or wo is tarah se hoga ke aap log time by time bhi question answer ka aapko tab nazar aa raha hoga uske zariye aap question answers humse pooch sakte hain and towards the end we will have 10 to 15 minutes jisme aap uh, direct communicate bhi kar sakte hain murtaza ke sath so that's about it okay let's get started assalam alaikum how's everyone doing <laughs> okay um so just uh, you know as i talk uh, don't wait until the end to ask questions um just ask Abise because otherwise I will be talking for like 40 minutes and I don't want to talk that long. <laughs> so just uh, chat me if you can put, uh, put your questions and uh, I will try and answer them as we go along. So it's a bit more interactive. One night, uh, you know, it'll be like a lot of me just like solo talking. And so that's kind of boring. Okay, so let's get started. Um, <clears throat> uh, most of you, I think, will remember the mentor seminar um, I did uh, a couple of weeks ago, maybe two months ago, something. Um, I think during week zero where I kind of talked about my journey. So you may have heard part of the story before, but um, what I wanted to do was I wanted to focus on the really early days. So the, the struggling part and not the success part, TK. The success part is what everyone sees, you know, that's the outside view, that's the world sees. And so um, it's very easy to look at a lot of success part and think like, Bhai, I'm so far away from that, I'm never going to get there. Right. So what I want to do in this talk is focus on all the bad parts. Uh, so you hear, ke bhai, you know, aside from the public facing image, like how shitty life is usually during that journey. And so when you go through the process yourself, you understand, okay, bhai, this is normal. And every success goes through decades of shittiness, essentially. And so that's what I'm going to focus on. Um, so, and I'm really going to focus on the early years of my life. So let's get started. Also, you know, this is a story that I actually haven't told a lot of people. So very few people actually know about this story. And so, uh, you know, I'm, uh, I'm sharing it now. Uh, and so it's very personal and near and dear to me. And, you know, maybe like five people have heard the story. Um, so, uh, you know, you guys are in for a treat. <laughs> uh, so, uh, the year is 1999 uh, or 1998, I can't remember, but something, you know, about 22 years ago. And the internet had just launched. Okay. And so uh, we had like cybernet in Pakistan and you had to go to the store, pay them money, and they would sell you like 10 hours of dial up internet. Most of you are too young to remember this, uh, but that's, that's how internet started um, very early on. And I was, uh, I was 13 years old at the time and um summer vacations vvt and school you know like three months off and so me and my friends i had like five friends uh we saw an ad in in dawn newspaper k uh so this is in karachi to uh learn web design and we're like okay this sounds fun we love computers um and so we are going to go learn web design so we signed up for a two and a half month summer course Jahape, like local, I think it was on Tariq Road and I lived in PCHS. So it was pretty close to my house. 
and uh, we would go like four times a week saturday sunday it was all day so like 10 hours a day and then i think tuesday wednesday like uh, four or five hours shamko and so they started off us off with all the fundamentals right so we learned how to make websites using microsoft front page if you are old enough you will remember front page was kind of how a lot of early web designers learned how to make websites then we started on dreamweaver flash photoshop um uh, you know the basics to build like a cool looking website and so you know i spent three months uh in the summer learning how to make websites when i was 13 and so did my friends um uh, and i had a really weird dream that summer and what's interesting is within around a week or so of that time my brother had the same dream so for those of you who don't know my brother uh my brother his name is ali he's my elder brother by two years and me and him have done all our startups together and so uh for the last 20 years all our startups kind of have been done together and we've gone on this journey together so it's so weird that like you know i have this dream and then a week later my brother has a very similar dream so what was the dream the dream was basically um uh we wanted to really help people by building a big university so people could learn skills and then go like earn money in life and succeed because you know when you grow up in pakistan there's like poverty everywhere like it's there isn't a lot of opportunity and so for us, this dream um, was very simply, we opened up a huge university and, um, you know, we put thousands of uh, students through it and they, they completely changed their lives. Um, and, you know, I wish I was making this up, but you can see the irony here. This is called the Institute of Emerging Careers. <laughs> uh, and 22 years later, I am now supporting this. So. You know, I hope you can you can connect the dots here. Um, so I have this dream, and then in my dream, um, what I do is in order to pay for the university, I actually start a web design company uh, that goes on to make lots of money, and then you know it funds the university. So, uh, and my brother's dream, he had a slightly different one. So he was doing an accounting uh, internship at the time at like some accounting firm. And uh, so in his dream, he started a big accounting firm that he used the profits from that to pay for, for this university. Uh, and I was doing the web design course, so I guess maybe my dream was web design and his was accounting. And um, so that happened. Uh, we talked about it. I remember I was 13 at the time. Ali was 15. Um, and uh, And then we actually decided, like, Let's start something. And so we actually started um, Gaming Ventura, which um, this is a logo. I was like looking up old pictures. So I found a few old pictures for you guys to see. So this was the logo we designed in 1999. Um, and Gaming Ventura was probably one of the first web design firms in, in Pakistan. And you know we were little kids doing this in like summer school. Um, um, and yeah, that's how we got started. Um, so what we did was, um, so here's a picture of our first office, if you can see. <laughs> so, uh, uh, this was a friend's office um, that uh, his dad gave us the space. And so all the people you see here and all the computers you see here are basically all bootstrapped. Like we didn't have any funding. We were like 13 years old, 14 years old. Uh, and so what we did was we went around like to all the brands um, and we told them, hey, you need a website. Because this was, I think, 99, 2000. Uh, brands would just take their brochure, scan it as a JPEG and upload it as their website. Like that was the level of sophistication for websites back then. And so we went to these brands and we said, you know, we'll make you a community powered website where people can view your products. They can log in. They can talk to each other um and so they got really excited by it and so we managed to get a few contracts um uh, and we just like you know bootstrapped it ourselves i remember the first time we got an ac in this office was like so happy because and like they're like, getting an ac was like a life changer uh 
Uh, I see a comment in the chat. Please speak Urdu. Yeah, my Urdu is not very good anymore. It's been 20 years since I've spoken Urdu. So I will try. But uh, my Urdu is not very good. So I will try and speak a little slowly, maybe if it helps. Um, I wish I could. Yeah, I just, I, my, it's been too long. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, let's see. So the brands we, uh, we built stuff for are these, you may recognize most of these in Pakistan. So Pakola, we went to Pakola and uh, we built this really cool like concept where they had different like drinks so we made a jigsaw puzzle in the shape of a can where different jigsaw puzzles fit in Pele, you may remember we had um, like micro uh, like flash um, uh, and so you could do these like really cool animated websites using flash so that's what we built it on uh, for tapal we went and did uh, like a dieting website because their big uh, issue was uh, Coca-Cola and people were drinking Pepsi and Coke and they didn't want to drink chai. And so they thought, ke bhai, you know, that's be salme chai khatam ho jayegi. No one's going to drink tea anymore. And so, uh, we built them a, a dieting website where we had, uh, some dietitians and some recipes. And so tea was promoted as a healthy website. Um, uh, and then Nike ke liye, we actually built them a gully cricket website. Uh, so you know how everyone plays gully cricket, uh, or cricket in their gullies. Um, and so we built a matchmaking website, uh, where people could like connect with each other and have competition. So like my gully versus your gully, um, and, um, uh, so forth. And, you know, we would charge these companies and then we would use the profits to, uh, pay for salaries. Uh, you know, very early on, I stopped coding because I just realized like I need to hire more people. So I think I did speak. We had maybe thus be slow. We had hired uh, full time uh, to make to make these websites and products. Uh, cool. Here, kya uh, I went to college, and uh, I went to college in America, and. Um, Pakistan maybe had hired a person, Shifa, to run the operation. We gave her a profitable operation with 20 full-time people and she ran it into the ground in two weeks. And hum America mein bethe the, university and we couldn't do anything. So the whole gaming venture thing we built over three, four years kind of went down the drain. Um, uh, it really sucks, you know, when you like spend so much effort building something and it all goes to zero very quickly. Um, this was like, I think my first real big failure. Um, and you'll, you'll hear a lot about failure. Um, but, uh, that's, um, uh, that's where it started. So William Spey, uh, we were like, Okay, we have a question. Why did you go to America for uh, for university? So I got a scholarship at a place called Williams College. And uh, so yeah, I, uh, I went for university. Williams Bay, I was there for only one year. Uh, during my freshman year, uh, my parents got divorced. Uh, and this is also a story not too many people know. Um, uh, so I'm sharing it with you guys here. And my dad refused to pay for anything. And even though I was on a full scholarship, um, just living expenses, expenses for my mom, like I was like, hey, um, like I had no money. I was not earning any money. My, the one company I had had just gone down in flames. So I was like, okay, uh, I, I don't see the point of spending four years in undergraduate and then maybe another two years doing a master's to then get a job. And, uh, you know, I was like, I need to earn money now. And so part of my decision to, to start a company and drop out of college was just, yeah, I need money. I have no money. Um, like I didn't come from money. Like my dad or family didn't give me a bunch of money. Like their 
you know, a lot of people in Pakistan, I think, you know, have their family business or family properties or family something. I had zero, um, like act, actually zero. Now I was lucky. I was, you know, I got a scholarship. I, I had a decent childhood, but I didn't have money to start a business. Uh, but what I did have is I knew how to make websites, right? <laughs> Uh, and you can see the parallels here to the process you're going through is when you have a skill, you, you can make your own money, um, which is beautiful. Um, so I went and, uh, we started thinking of ideas when I was in college with my brother and some other co-founders and, uh, we started, uh, iterating. Uh, and I think I talked about this story last time I was talking with you guys about how I emailed 3000 people on the alumni list, uh, for the college. And a few people said yes to investing in our company. And so this here is a picture of, uh, a dinner we did, uh, the, the old guy there, his name is Mark gold. He's one of the nicest, loveliest guys in the world. And he wrote us a $50,000 check which was the first money we raised. And so this is a picture with me, my brother, and then uh, two other co-founders um, that, uh, that we had. Um, and so this was one of the first guys that trusted us. Um, uh, he was a lawyer in the local town and he was just like, you know, you guys have good energy, so uh, why not? Let's take a chance. Uh, this was actually not for Zuka.com. Uh, this was for, uh, so let me go through the pivots. So talk about failure. Okay. Let's look at the number of pivots we did. So we first started off as Shoutmouth, which was a peer to peer decentralized news network. Uh, now I guess with Bitcoin and crypto decentralization is all the hype, but we were trying to do this in 2005. Uh, and nobody cared. We had like a 50 page business plan and we thought we had everything figured out and it was a complete failure. Uh, after that, we started iVenster.com, which was, um, and that is what this money was for. So iVenster was uh, events at your college and colleges around you. Because college students usually have a lot of events, parties, parties, practice, sports practice, dramas, you know, concerts, or get or whatever. And so this was a listing of parties. And so this is what we raised the money for. But very quickly, we found that people signed up and then never came back. So we were, we were successful in signing up about 200,000 people across 30 or 40 colleges in the US. Um, and this is all while I was in school. But then summer vacation came, they all went home and then they never came back to the website. And Usiva, we saw this website called Facebook uh, picking up. They were only a year old. It was called the facebook.com and Facebook had really good traction. So we're like, they're getting repeat usage. So we should just build a social network, you know, forget about this events business. We should just do a social network. And so inspired by Facebook, we copied, it was called Zuka.com, which was a social networking website, uh, which actually got very popular. Uh, uh, I think globally it signed up 20 to 30 million people. Uh, we raised a million dollars for it in seed funding. I dropped out of college, moved out to San Francisco to work on it full time. And then right after that, I actually moved back to Karachi for a couple of years because we had raised a million, which sounds a lot, but when you're hiring 30, 40 people, it, uh, you know, salaries in San Francisco are too high. So we moved back to Karachi and we set up uh, an office in Karachi. We had like 30, 40 people. Um, and we were like, I think one of the first employers that were doing like full open source stack. Um, and so it was very new and very exciting um, when we were doing that. So this was 2005 to 2009. Okay, how do you filter out ideas? Which one will make money? Which one will not? Um, that's a good question. You know, so when you're usually starting on an idea, the, the objective is not, okay, bhai, will this make money or not? Because most things don't make money early on. Okay. The objective is, okay, bhai, is this something people want? Am I building something that will get users and, and 
usage because if it does eventually you'll figure out a way to make money and um, you know i can probably give a whole other three hour lecture on finding product market fit and so i think i don't want to spend too much time here but the summary is and i've i've spent 20 years trying to figure this out i don't have a good answer to this the only answer i have to this is you just have to try a bunch of different things and not lose enthusiasm and motivation between all the failures which is a great segue to the next question which is sir how to concentrate after failure theek hai na and and this is i think honestly what sets success and failure like people who succeed and people who fail the only difference between them is one stops trying and the other one keeps trying that's it nothing else because um everyone fails everyone fails constantly i mean i'll tell you my most recent failures okay let's talk about my most recent failures so i sold streamlabs for a shit ton of money in 2019 okay i don't have to work ever again in my life however i love building i love my craft so i was like okay i'm going to keep building so let's talk about my failures after i've been doing this for 20 years and you know the older you get the smarter you think you are and therefore the failures hurt even more because your ego is bigger theek hai na so i started a a a pet subscription creates you every month you get a box in the mail with like pet toys and then we take all the profits from that then we rescue animals and i tried that for 6 months launched it got 100 subscribers and then i had to shut it down because it wasn't working then i tried to do a non profit that didn't work out um uh, then i tried um a c- certain things in fintech that didn't work out um and then most recently i tried a surfing instruction business that i had to shut down because of city regulations uh, even though it was working out i had traction uh, i could totally see it working but uh the city is like nope we won't give you a license to run this and i didn't want to get into legal battles with with the local city here so i shut it down and so even since streamlabs which was just almost 2 years ago now i failed four times four four times um if i had to make a list of all my career like things that i built launched and shut down you know you're probably looking at over 30 30 products um not just ideas right like built try to market it got some users and then shut down um and so you just have to keep going um uh, and that's it there's no other answer to it and there's a lot of people in fact the majority of people will stop um and so you know i uh, ali and i used to joke ke bhai our super power was we were cockroaches we would never die you know how cockroaches are supposed to be like invincible they can survive like a nuclear explosion um so that's like what we called ourselves or like we're cockroaches you can't kill us because the only time you 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 fail is when you decide to give up and so as long as you decide not to give up you can have no money you can have nothing but you can still keep going uh cool um and then so so finishing up on this company zuka eventually turned into peanut labs which became like a market research company uh that raised about 5 million dollars uh and then we sold for about 30 million uh in 2010 and so that was like my first real like venture funded exit um uh and then after that and so i won't get into the story after that here but after that after that first big success I spent another 6 years failing built 20 products that all went nowhere um uh, 6 years of coding um so you know I I I don't think the failure goes so the second time um when I was building these 20 products um uh, I learned how to code um or design again for the second time and I I kind of want to talk about this experience a little because you know the first time i had learned web design was you know in 99 the technologies were very different um and so you know 10 saal guzar gaye the 
एंड सो आई डेंट फील लाइक ए भाई आई वॉज लाइक वेन यू हैव एन आइडिया इन योर हेड एंड यू हैव टू एक्सप्लेन इट टू सम वन एंड देन वेट फॉर देम टू बिल्ड इट एंड देन हैव देम चेंज इट बिकॉज दे डेंट क्वाइट गेट इट राइट इट सक्स सो इट्स सो मच बेटर वेन यू हैव एन आइडिया इन योर हेड एंड यू कैन जस्ट मेक इट योर सेल्फ एंड सो आई वॉन्टेड टू यू नो लर्न हाउ टू कोड अगेन एंड सो आई डेड एंड you know i signed up on udemy and linda.com which became like linkedin skills i think and i just spent 3 months you know taking courses online uh and most of these were free honestly or maybe like 10 20 um it's not much um and i uh i just taught myself um i taught myself web design again i taught myself programming um and so these 20 different products that we built i actually built the front end for all of them um uh so the failure was even worse because like i had built the damn thing <laughs> uh so when they don't work you feel it even more um versus you know if it's someone else's idea or someone else built it it, it hurts less um and so here is the formula that i think um i used back in 2011 and i think still applies today if you want to learn how to you know either design or program in the fastest way possible um you need of course a certain base of knowledge so you spend a few months learning but once you do that the fastest way you will learn is the following okay uh sorry i have some more questions um i'm going to Let's go through this, and then we'll go over some of the questions. So here's my formula. Okay. Uh, you do one project a week. Pick any project. Okay. When I was learning web design again, I literally took a simple website like Craigslist.com, and I said I'm going to try and recreate the front end myself by writing my own HTML CSS of Craigslist.com. You know, that's like one of the easiest, simplest. uh things you can do and then i would be like okay let me go copy twitter.com or facebook.com and so every week i would pick a new project new website and i would try and build it from scratch uh and i would spend probably 30 to 40 hours a week in addition to the startup stuff we were doing uh, just like getting better uh and you know looking back i probably did about 50 projects uh test projects they aren't they don't have to be perfect production ready right they can be like simple stuff that you start and then they get more complicated in a two and a half year period 50 projects and at the end of that i was like okay now i think i am like good enough where you know i can i can compete at an international level um and that's it that's the formula you know one project per week 50 50 projects some weeks you will be busy and you won't get time so it takes about 2 years to do this maybe 1 year if you are doing it every day full time maybe less if you're doing it really full time uh but i wasn't doing it full time so just fii uh that's the formula i think that works um uh, because a lot of people look will learn web design or web development or ui ux but they won't put in the repetitions okay the the key is the repetitions because when you keep doing the same thing again and again you you master it and um that mastery is what you need to succeed uh you know you so um now whether you are doing this um as as just for fun or you're doing this as like client projects or you're doing this as your own startup doesn't matter but that's roughly the formula um and then lastly you know i'll say this um and this is this is an issue i see a lot everywhere pakistan may especially you see this issue but you see it everywhere all around the world a lot of people think of work as bhai yaar kaam pe jana hai kaam karna hai i hate my life i hate work kyun kar raha hu main bakwas hai blah 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 okay that's not how you should think about work okay think about work as 
as something like this is your gift to the world okay this is this is your craft you're an artist and this is your painting this is this is you have to be proud of your work and the moment you can actually get to a point where you are proud of your work and you're like i, I made this whether it's a design or a website or an app or whatever you're building uh, if you can be truly proud of it because you put so much effort into it and you did the best possible job you could that's how i think you know good things happen uh, and that's how you will really succeed because it shows you know like when i'm interviewing people i can tell within like 20 seconds of looking at someone uh, ke bhai, is it was their heart into it or not was this a job for them or was this like a passion project for them and so that would be just if you take away one advice from this whole talk uh take this advice is you know be proud of your work and if this is something you don't like you know you're like yeah i don't give a shit about this then it's fine go go find something else you know this is not for you that's fine um but really really find something that you can you know put your soul into it and and that's how i think you 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 will produce the best work and succeed and and do good for yourself and your family okay so let's talk about questions we've got uh, got quite a few questions here okay in web based digital startup what are some of the major cost consuming factors so today uh, the only cost is time is your time and your co-founder time and any employees you have because everything else is free you know you can find credits for amazon aws servers for free you can you know you can get free tiers for almost anything right now so the only cost is time now the problem with this is because the cost has gotten so low the competition has gotten very very high because anyone can make a startup right so when anyone can make a startup millions of people are making startups and so it's much harder to succeed today than it was 10 years ago 20 years ago because there's a million plus more people doing it uh, but the good news is there's no cost so you can try and try and try until you succeed uh sir when will our web course be started uh bilal danish i think we already started no Yes, it started. Adnan, I think I will like type in my email address here and you can get in touch with me on my email. Cool. Uh, what did you try to develop in financial technology? Uh, yeah, so we were making um, like, a, like a stock trading app, like a social stock trading app. Um, and uh, uh, kind of like Robin Hood. I don't know if you've heard of Robin Hood. It's very popular here in the US. So you can basically buy and sell like stocks for free. And so we were trying to make a more social experience out of it. Um, and so, um, yeah. Um, and then eventually the problem was we couldn't find a business model because the current business model is you take, the reason you can offer it for free is you take the data of the order flow it's called payment for order flow and you sell it to these third party firms then that use that data to um, trade against the client who's making the order and all of this happens in like a millisecond um, so even though the practice is legal in the us i think it's very unethical because the person placing the order gets uh, gets an unfair price for the order and you know we didn't want to do that it didn't feel ethical and so we're like Forget about it. Make it now. Okay, let's uh, look in chat now. Mariman wants to be a cockroach. That's great. <laughs> uh, Maham, great to have this formula. Uh, Asim, already working on this formula. Yep, great. Good to hear, guys. And then let's see, next question. Sir, someone is good in computer science, someone in writing, someone in other field. The issue is how to choose a field which have some fun as well as the opportunities. Um, pick whatever you are drawn to. You know, all of us are drawn to different things. And so 
you can be great in any field and you will have an amazing career so don't feel like ke bhai computers mein karna hai uh, you can you can do it in writing you can do it in theater in in whatever uh, so you know don't look at ke kahan pe opportunity hai because wahan pe then you won't love your craft you have to love what you do uh, because if you don't love what you do yaar this 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 road is really hard <laughs> you will not you will not make it um right or you will not really make it as as far as you can make it in something that if you did love it so i think falling in love with your work is step one now it doesn't happen automatically i think the way it happens is you do something and then you get excited about it and then you want to do it a little bit more and then you do a little bit more and then you like get a little more excited and then so it, you know it takes a little bit of time uh there's no such thing as love is first sight i don't believe in that so but it's a process but in that process you know you learn to to be really proud of your work um uh, so that that's my only advice there um but what if a project takes more time than usual allocated time and you don't get satisfied with your craft how to handle an unsatisfying craft <laughs> great question baham So um have you heard of a thing called the imposter syndrome okay so the imposter syndrome is usually people who feel like they're not good enough okay it happens to a lot of us there are some people who think they are the world's best they are god's gift to mankind okay and those people are usually idiots uh because they are not very good at what they do and yet they think they are amazing at what they do the imposter syndrome is the opposite where you have people who are actually good at what they do but they're not very sure about themselves so anyone who is looking at their craft and is kind of unhappy with it and they're like yaar i could have made it better you know itna acha nahi hai whatever i can write the code better i can make the design better i can that is a great sign okay that's like an amazing sign because that shows that you care you know that shows that you care about making it better and so any time you look at something and you're like yaar it's not good enough you know like pat yourself on the back and be like great job because now you you've at least identified and you have that 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 part in you that's like yaar i'm going to make this better uh and that's usually step one of improvement and so what do you do you just do it again you build it again and you build it again and you build it again until you are like okay now i'm proud of it um and that's how artists work right no artist makes a masterpiece in the first go they they spend 50 years redoing the same thing a, a thousand times before they get it right and that's you know but but identifying that it's not good enough is like step one which is great which is what you're asking so um cool cool is this the first lecture of the web course maybe not sure <laughs> tarish can probably tell you okay how can we come out of this syndrome yeah uh, you don't really come out of this syndrome um um uh, you know you can learn to identify it and and know okay bhai it's happening to me um uh, but the syndrome is usually what will allow you to become good at what you do it's actually a strength it's not a weakness it's a katena is a feature not a bug um uh because you need it to to keep pushing hard because otherwise if we just made something and we were satisfied with it nothing would ever improve think about it in the world if the first time anyone ever built something and they were happy with it nothing would ever improve and so this constant iteration of improvement is is where the magic lies uh sir draw something and just love this as you know yep i don't quite understand that mehrwan but um uh, uh right repetition without caring about time deadlines or other constraints yeah so time deadlines and other constraints you know are a real reality in this world look we all will always have time constraints or budget constraints or some sort of constraint and sometimes they can 
they can really affect your ability to do great work because you're like, bhai, I have to ship this tomorrow. So I don't care how good the code quality is. I'm going to ship it. Uh, but other times it really helps because, you know, like ha happens to me, I'm quite lazy a lot of times and having a deadline forces me to put in the work. And so I don't know, it goes both ways. Um, I like deadlines, honestly, because I think a lot of humans can be very lazy. And unless we have deadlines and we have a little bit of danda, you know, we don't really move. <laughs> and so especially in like the early phases of as you're learning this deadlines are helpful because you just want you know repetitions you don't you're not going to produce a picasso work in your first week you just you have to do those repetitions so yeah so uh, maybe uh, i will have a question for you which might be in the mind of some of the people who have joined us so <clears throat> Would you like to share something, maybe the lessons learned? So I'm sure you have uh, shared um, in, in your presentation that what are your top two lessons? Love your work and be consistent, repeat things, right? Do mm -hmm. one project per week. So what would be your advice on soft skills maybe, right? So mm -hmm. on critical thinking, on leadership, on time management maybe. So mm -hmm. how, how can we do that? How can we make changes in our personality to adapt to these? So there are a lot of soft skills that you need to learn. Okay. Um, because chances are you will work in a team. Okay. And in a team, it doesn't matter how good your own skills are, because if you drag the rest of the team down, they won't like it and you'll get fired or they, they will leave or whatever. So I think the, the number one sort of soft skill I would say is get good at English. Uh, if you're not like comfortable speaking English, uh, I would focus on English as your number one soft skill because the, the business world, uh, especially if you work with international companies, which you should, because that's how you will make good money, um, is going to be in English. And if you don't speak English properly, they will not hire you. I know this because that's how we operate. You know, like when I have pe people on my team that like a lot of them will not speak Urdu. So how can I hire someone who doesn't speak English regardless of how good they are? So that's one. Um, the second one is I would say, learn to communicate like effectively and honestly. Uh, I think a lot of times, like in our culture, we don't want to upset someone, you know, we're like, oh, he's my boss. So I don't want to upset him. So I'm just going to shake my head and say, yes, yes. Uh, you know, like if someone asks, do you know how to do this? You know, let's say someone asks, do you know JavaScript? And let's say you don't know JavaScript really that well, but you just say, ha, ha, ho jayega, ho jayega, inshallah, inshallah. Right. Like, don't do that stuff because it will break trust. So if someone asks you a question, you answer honestly. Doesn't matter whether they will like your answer or not. Uh, uh, I think that's a very important thing. Uh, no exaggeration, no lying, no ho jayega, hope for the best, <laughs> none of that. Um, uh, because chances are the other person is not perfect either. You know, we're, none of us are perfect. We're all working on this to improve. And so being honest and vulnerable is, is, is important because that's how you build trust with your team members. Um, um, what else in terms of soft skills, I would say. Um, learning to tell a story is very important, especially if you want to do your own startup. People buy vision and stories. They don't buy a okay, product because uh, whatever product you're thinking of building, I can promise you there's like 10 other people out there trying to do the same thing. Okay. So really what differentiates startups, um, especially with investors and, and raising money and recruiting people and getting other people to join and believe in your vision is learning to tell a story. And how do you tell that story? And do you believe in it yourself? enough that it's your life's mission because then other people will join you on your life mission. 
इफ यू आर जस्ट लाइक भाई यू नो लेट्स ट्राई पैसे बने बने नहीं बने विल यू नो देखा जाएगा नो बडी इज गोइंग टू बी इंस्पायर्ड बाई यू एंड सो यू नो हैविंग दैट पैशन एंड इट नीड्स टू कम फ्रॉम अ ट्रू प्लेस यू कॉन्ट फेक इट बिकॉज अदर वन अदर पीपल विल रीड इट एंड यू नो इट्स वेरी इजी टू सी वेन सम इज फेकिंग द स्टफ सो thank you thank you for uh, for sharing this so uh, mr we have a question so if you are working on something and it's all going good when should you make the exit um uh talhar do you have this problem right now <laughs> i just i'm curious <laughs> this is a very end game question this is not a start game question so a kaam karo when uh, when you get there uh, ping me and then we will chat uh, this is a very complicated question again i could probably spend an hour or two talking just about this question um uh short answer is never the more realistic answer is at some time because you need to pay for things you need to buy a house in life you need to like you know life happens so um but historically i look back at all the companies i've sold and every single one of them i sold too early and had i not sold them it they would have been much bigger and better uh like had i not sold streamlabs you know it probably would have been a publicly listed company in the us today uh so regrets but at the time i didn't know that i i had spent 9 years i needed some some exit i was you know <laughs> i was exhausted so uh but yeah talha when you have that question come talk to me <laughs> it's a it's it's a whole other kind of forms uh right. sir sudanya sorry go ahead yeah so um talha uh, is one of our students so uh, you have murtaza's email id and you can get in touch with him as well yeah so i was adding to another question in the chat box so Daniel is saying that what is your advice for the young startup owners? Yeah, so right now is an amazing time to be a young startup owner in Pakistan. Um, you know, Airlift just raised a crazy round. Um, I actually invested in Airlift, um, and then we had uh, the other one, Bazaar, also raise a massive round. That's also one of my investments. Uh, voice is not clear sir uh danish can you, can you guys hear me it is clear okay, it's clear i can you might might be your internet sorry <laughs> uh okay so you know i think it's a great time to be a, a startup founder in pakistan so just do it pick an idea spend 3 months building it shipping it see if you get traction if not do something else like another idea but keep at it it's a great time to be a startup founder in pakistan right now honestly um there's a lot of money there's a lot of funding there's a lot of excitement um next 5 years are going to be amazing um um so what is the road map for web developer in your opinion uh learn the basics when learn javascript learn python or some back end programming language learn how to read and write to a database and then build build 50 projects that's it you know start with simple like note taking apps and go all the way to like a full fledged website uh like a i don't know try and copy airbnb that um then karen you said be honest do you mind sharing some story related to when your employee said no to you and you liked the way they did i don't see many examples of people higher level job accepting no from their juniors even with a valid reason <laughs> yeah so this is a great question um i think here's what happens there are many examples where someone said no to me and they explained their reasons why and i changed my mind and i said yes you are right i am wrong um i've also had many examples where someone says no to me explains their reasons i explain my reasons and i say no you are wrong a lot of times when i say i understand what you're saying i disagree because of these reasons the person cannot hear a no so just like you're saying employers can't hear no's 
employees also don't like to hear no's. So it works both ways. Okay, both parties are at fault here. And if you genuinely feel like you have a boss who is an idiot, who you say no to, you explain your reasons very clearly, and they don't understand it, find a new boss. Quit your job and find a new boss. Because you can't change them. People don't change really. So the best thing for you to do is just to leave on good terms and find a better boss who is logical, who can understand. Usually the more senior up you go, the more open-minded people are. It's usually the lower management who is very close-minded. So chances are the, the more senior you get and the more like you talk to the, the business owners, the more open-minded they are. Um, so that's just my advice. Um, um, but I've, I've had it other times too, where an employee asks for feedback. I give them feedback that I believe is true, but they don't accept it because they disagree. And at some point, but that's okay too. You know, agreeing to disagree is also is okay. Uh, not everyone is going to agree on everything in the world. Um, so. Yep. Cool, cool. All right, uh, we've got three minutes left. So let's do one more question maybe. How many hours do you work in a day? Um, I probably do like six hours of work a day. Um, maybe eight. I don't actually work that that long. I, you know, I don't think it's possible for a startup initially. Okay, so I mean, early days when I was young, when I was 20, I could work 18 hours a day. Uh, now I, I can't do it. My body can't take it. Um, but in hindsight, the number of hours you work does not matter, honestly, because what matters are the quality of the decisions you are making. And usually the more you work, the worse decisions you make because you're tired, you're exhausted, you haven't slept. So you're in no frame of mind to make good decisions. And so working less, but working smarter and making good decisions and making sure the time you are working, you're actually productive is, is, is very important because I can get like work done in two hours, what someone may take 10 hours to do. But in those 10 hours, they're not really working. You know, they're like on Facebook, they're like checking WhatsApp, they're like watching some YouTube videos, Ghani Chalane background may. Uh, they're not really working, working. And so I've stopped like, you know, really measuring work time because it's, I think it's more like focus time. How much time are you really focused and doing deep work? Uh, I think which, which really matters. <laughs> Okay, so Murtaza, I, I was thinking about something and I want to hear your thoughts about it because there are a lot of opinions when it comes to this. Okay? Um, so a lot of people are working, like if you ask me, I, I would think about something and um, I would think that this is a startup already and it's going to be successful. So why create the same thing? But there are other people who also say that if you have an idea that you already have, maybe add some bits to it um, and start working on the same thing. So is how I let's say, what do you think? Like, should we invest in something new or we can definitely invest in something that is already being done? Investing in something that is already being done is way better because inventing new things is really, really hard and you will fail 99% of the time, even if everything else is perfect, you know? So finding something that's working and making it like, like putting your own twist on it with a different market or different user acquisition channel, you're different. Uh, something different is actually a really, really good um, idea, I think, because it's so much easier. I'll give you an example. Um, so one of the things we did was Vulcan, which was like uh, daily fantasy, like, you know, like sports where people make fantasy teams. And so, uh, there was a company called DraftKings that was doing it for like American sports, like football, basketball, baseball. And so we copied that idea, but we did it for esports, like, um, like uh, online games, because we were in online games. So League of Legends, Dota, Counter-Strike, um, 
because we knew that market we're like okay let's take a mechanic that's working in a similar market and just apply it to a different market uh and so that actually worked quite well um so yeah great, uh, great. you know you. you know there's a there's a saying uh uh good artists copy great artists steal mm. and so there's some truth in there <laughs> true <laughs> All right. I have an ed tech idea which I want to pursue in Pakistan. <clears throat> yeah, Daniel, it really depends on your idea and 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 stuff. Um, I would say, don't even think about revenue model right now. Um, you know, unless you have like at least a couple of thousand students every day, like using your platform, then think about revenue. Say, Pele, don't even think about revenue. Uh, it doesn't matter. Um, like one of the, one of the mentors uh, we, we got on IEC, uh, he actually runs one of, uh, well, the Pakistan's largest and most well-known venture fund called Indus Capital. His name is Atif Awan. So we should have him do a session as well. So if you want to like talk about specifically investing in Pakistan and startups, you know, I think Atif would be a great guy for you, for all of you to like learn from and because he's like, they're actively investing. So he invested in airlift and bazaar and all these other well-known Pakistani startups. Great, great. So any last questions? anyone and then we can wrap it up or any any concluding thoughts that you guys may have about the session that you would like Murtaza to read right now silence means that they loved it <laughs> <You know? laughs> so i think it'll be very interesting to see at the end of your IEC like course, you know, like uh, in nine months or so from now, uh, like what comes out of it, you know, um, I'm, sure. I'm very, I'm very excited to see like the companies we get, the, the, the kind of talent, how much you've been able to learn and code. And so I'm, I'm very excited. Cool, cool. All right. Thank you, everyone. I'm excited to see right. how this turns out. How my dream Absolutely. turns out. So, you know, <laughs> you guys are my dream. Don't let me down, bhai, please. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think um, we should wrap it up. Thank you so much, Murtaza, for joining in and for everyone else who joined in. Um, just want to repeat one thing. Okay, we will be opening our applications for IEC second cohort in a couple of weeks' time. Uh, so stay tuned. If you have already our course, then you can recommend it to someone else. Or if you don't have a part, so this is your chance um, to become part of uh, Murtaza's dream. Uh, so I will see you next time uh, in another online webinar, which will be arranged in next two weeks. Um, so thank you so much. Take care, everyone. And um, give us feedback. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Love us.